Hi, my name is Diana Beglin and I uh, make Amish knot rugs and I had a few people ask to ask me to make a video to show how to switch colors with an Amish knot rug uh, and avoid the stair step effect. So I've made several Amish knot rugs. I'm not an expert by any means, but this is something that I've figured out how to do and so I'm sharing it. And if you can reproduce it, if this helps you, and if you find your own way of doing it, then that is great. And I encourage you to share with the world. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about here, where you see I've transitioned from one color to another. And you can see that there's a minimal amount of um, the abruptness where you switch from one color to another. Here you can see where I didn't do it so well and there is this abrupt stair step effect. Now, if you look closely here, you'll see that the, the dark brown kind of tapers off. And it seems to be just a natural transition to the calico. So that's what we're gonna try to do today. Um, I would not recommend doing this if you're um, the width of your color that you're switching to is less than at least three or four rows because um, you won't have enough time, you won't have enough rows to compensate for any um, wobbling, any um, bumps that you may have in your rug. Um, I would also not advise it if the uh, uh, working strands that you have are of drastically different densities. If they're drastically different densities, you're gonna get a big uh, bump and your, your rug is not gonna be even. Now, of course, you don't have to do this when you're making an Amish knot rug. Um, you know, you can switch colors wherever you want. It's a rag rug, it doesn't have to be perfect, but sometimes, you know, maybe we're making it for a gift or for to enter into a competition, and so we want it to have a little bit more finesse. So. Um, one thing I will show you on the rug I'm making right now in this purple. Um, here is my center line. This is my starter row. You'll notice that I've got a safety pin in it at the end where um, I make my, my uh, first full turn. This is to help me keep things symmetrical. So. Um, there will be, when I'm done with this rug, there will be the same number of rows on each side. I like to do it that way, you don't have to, but for me, that helps. Another thing I like to do is when I am um, transitioning to a color, if I wanna make a smooth uh, transition, I make sure that I do it at the end where, I've met, where I'm completing a full lap and I do it on the, I make sure that the um, colors transition on the, as I'm coming out of the second curve here. All right, um, on the rug you saw previously, I did it in the middle of, that, of this curve and it was much harder to disguise. So if I want this to be finished here, if I want the transition to be finished in this spot, or I'm coming out of the curve and I've marked it here with the safety pin just for convenience, then I wanna come back about six or seven loops. And that's where I'm going to start the work of transitioning. So, and I've marked that here with this safety pin. So here's my runner strand. I'm just gonna let that go over there. Here's my worker strand. And I'm gonna make just one more knot. And you'll notice that I go in the opposite direction of most people who make Amish knot rugs. It's still the same technique. I'm just doing this, poking up through the, the loop of the previous row rather than poking down. Um, I like it that way because I get better coverage. It's the same technique, you know, you do the way you do, and you will get lovely results as well. They'll just be different, that's all. Okay, now, here's one where I wanna start transitioning, and 
I need my transition rug, which my handy assistant will pass to me. You'll notice that I've already prepared it. So what I wanna do is just simply attach it to my runner, just like that, nothing fancy, okay? Now there's no science to this, it's really kind of a feel. If you do eight stitches before, whatever, if that works for you, that's great. So here's my new color that I'm going to switch to. I've attached it to my runner just by looping it on. And these first two stitches, all I'm doing is securing this down so that it doesn't fall off. So, just a couple stitches to hide it. I find that if I straighten out my fabric as I go, I get fewer knots and fewer spots where I'm unhappy with it. So there's one anchor, there's two anchors. And that should be enough. Again, we're just locking it down. Come on, there. All right. I get fussy with this because I like to have full coverage. If you have two pretty colors that you're using together, oh shoot, I didn't lock that down. I'm gonna have to redo that. Just tuck that under there. There we go. There's no such thing as a mistake in a rag rug. There's just a different way of doing things. And we're gonna ignore that string. There we go. So, pretty easy. Now what we wanna do is let the new color come over here and just hang out for a while. We're gonna ignore it. And we're going to take three more stitches, just like we normally would. I need to add an increase here because that's getting to be pretty big. I think you can tell this is my first video. I'm not very steady with this. I have an excellent camera person here assisting me. So we give this like three normal knots. Two or three, whatever works for you. Now what I want to do is take my runner and move it out of the way. And I'm going to come underneath it here. I'm going to make knots the rest of the way with my first color, but omitting the runner, right? The idea is that these knots will be half the depth of a normal row. So let's show you that. And that's how you get the nice transition look where the two rows kind of blend into each other. And I 
I don't have a runner to cover up, so I can just pull things through and not fuss with them as much. And again, this is getting to be a bit of a reach. I might need to add a, an increase there, we'll see. Oh, I think this is gonna work fine. I'm gonna add an increase here because this is getting to be pretty far. While I try to stick to two increases per end, sometimes you just can't reach the next knot unless you put one in. And so sometimes you get a few extra increases. As long as you're not ruffling your edges, it should be fine. Okay, so there we are. I'll loosen those loops up so that I can go through them on the next round, because that's where I have to go through. Let's see, let's add one more. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a half row here that is smaller than this full row up here. So I'm gonna take my needle off. You can use a needle. You can use a um, safety pin. You can use a locker hooking tool, whatever works for you. And then I simply switch it to the new color I like these little needles. I get them at Joann's. They're in the section by the by the uh, plastic canvas supplies, and they're just the right size for this. So here I am. This is nicely anchored. I can pull it out and I can start working. I will make a couple knots here again without the runner that are about half the size, half the depth. favorite part of this technique is coming up with fun and pretty color combinations and I thought this looked lovely when I saw it in the thrift store. So two knots, two or three, whatever works for you, without the runner. And this will bump out. This will be a little bit thicker than on the other side. That's okay you should be able to smooth it out with the next rows. Again, you don't want to um, use this technique if you are only doing a couple rows of the color. Okay, so now here we have the runner and we're ready to switch. Now we're gonna pick that up. So now I'm going through the loop of the old color in the row before, and I am using the runner. My camera person is letting me know that I'm probably making you seasick by all the moving around. I apologize for that. So here we go, we just continue. And from here on out, it should be as if you did not even change colors. You just keep going. 
Sometimes you have to boss around the fabric a little, that's okay. You're the boss, it goes where you tell it. And if it doesn't, then you back up and you tell it again. So we're here, we just keep going through each loop, wrapping around the runner with that lovely half hitch knot. Straighten it out. to this loop. And as you can see, we are about to pass the spot where we stopped using the original purple fabric. I'm going to squeeze one stitch in here. I might end up taking this one out. This looks like it's going to cause a stair step on me after I went to all that effort. So maybe I'll take it out. Let's see what it looks like. I guess this would be a good time to introduce my lovely camera person, my daughter Olivia. Getting to use her new iPhone to help me out. Oh, that's not so bad. All right, and so now I would just continue on uh, like a normal Amish knot rug. On the back, we have the excess I'll cut this off and pin it, and then when I'm done with the entire rug, I'll weave it into the, um, deeper into the rug and probably stitch it down with a couple of uh, stitches. I hope you found this informative. This is not a perfect technique, but then this is a rag rug, so perfection is not what we're going for. Thank you, and I hope this helped you.